Hello, and welcome to Lion, The Basics. Lion is perhaps one of the most iconic and beloved locomotives in preservation. Thanks to her starring role in the 1953 Ealing comedy, The Titfield Thunderbolt, the story of a plucky band of villagers who save their local branch line by running it themselves, antique locomotive included. This story is of course well known, but what of the engine herself before preservation? Lyon and her six sisters were ordered by the Liverpool and Manchester Railway in October 1837. Faced with a fleet of increasingly worn out and old fashioned locomotives and a predicted increase in traffic, Henry Booth, the railway's secretary, treasurer and general manager, was requested to carry out a survey of existing locomotives and to place an order for ten new ones. Six from Todd, Kitson and Laird of Leeds, two from Benjamin Hick and Company of Bolton, and two from Rothwell and Company, also of Bolton. They were to be delivered within six months and cost no more than £1,000. Both Hicks and Rothwells were long established firms, but Todd, Kitson and Laird had only been in existence for a month when they received a very lucrative contract and with no previous experience of building railway locomotives. So who were Todd, Kitson and Laird? The company was formed in Hunslet, Leeds on the 1st of September 1837. Charles Todd was an alumnus of the famous Round Foundry in Leeds. The Round Foundry had been established in 1795 by Matthew Murray, whose company Fenton, Murray and Wood had built the first commercial steam locomotives for use on the nearby Middleton Railway in 1812. James Kitson was also an alumnus of the Round Foundry, like Todd having been apprenticed there before having briefly worked for Robert Stevenson and Company in Newcastle. Finally there was David Laird, a prosperous yeoman farmer who provided the much needed capital. The works manager was John Chester Craven, who later found fame on the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway. It must have been quite a gamble on the part of Henry Booth to place an order with the young firm, especially since it was dissolved after less than 18 months in April 1839. Charles Todd joined forces with yet another Round Foundry alumnus, John Shepherd, to form Shepherd and Todd, whilst Kitson and Laird continued in business for a short time, before being joined by William Hewitson, another alumnus of the Round Foundry and of Robert Stevenson and Co in a new partnership in 1842. Lyon was perhaps uniquely built to two patents. That of Robert Stevenson of 1833 for a six-wheel engine and that of John Melling, the Liverpool and Manchester Railway's locomotive foreman of October 1837. Melling's patent improvements included a radial valve gear, which did away with the need for eccentrics. He also dispensed with coupling rods in favour of a coupling wheel. He patented a feed water heater placed under the firebox into which waste steam from the safety valve was directed. He used hollow water-filled fire bars and a form of brake using counter-rotating wheels. Lion was the first of these engines to be delivered in summer 1838. So impressed was Edward Woods, the chief engineer of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, with the quality of workmanship displayed by Lion and her sister Tiger, that the two became the pattern and the standard for other locomotives. Lion and Tiger were luggage engines, and that's the old fashioned term for a goods engine, working goods trains day in and day out from Liverpool to Manchester. A humdrum existence perhaps, but for Lion, one not without mishaps. Lion's driver was a Leeds lad called Joseph Greenall, and he had come over from Leeds to erect her in Manchester and remained as her driver. In November, Joseph was driving Lion banking a heavy goods train 
hauled by Fury, the train engine, and Patentee, the pilot engine. When toiling up the Wiston incline, Patentee's boiler exploded, killing both of her crew. And Greenall was considered partially to blame for this disaster because, contrary to standing orders, he had persuaded the crews of Fury and Patentee not to divide the train as it ascended the Wiston incline, and instead, so proud was he of his new engine, he thought they could take the load up in one go. In the following year, Lion suffered from an axle failure, causing her to derail. Lion ran in her original form for only a few short years. John Melling was dismissed as locomotive foreman in 1840 and replaced by John Durance as locomotive superintendent. Durance, together with his chief Edward Woods, developed between them a locomotive strategy akin to that of the first sea lord Jackie Fisher in 1900. Scrap the lot. Where a locomotive could not be rebuilt into a more modern, efficient form, and the Melling patent locomotives were indeed a peculiar lot, they were to be scrapped. Lion, luckily, was amongst those rebuilt, but the rebuild actually cost more than building a new locomotive. It is likely that the rebuild of Lion in April 1841 was so complete as to leave nothing left of the original engine perhaps other than her name, her number, and the wheels. The new Lion now had conventional gab valve gear with which she is still fitted, and a conventional boiler. Her first boiler had been oval in cross-section. Lion continued to work for the Liverpool and Manchester Railway and its successors, pulling goods trains until 1857. In that year, she was renumbered as ballast engine number 14, to work permanent way trains. She was sold by the London and North Western Railway in May 1859 to the Mersey Docks and Harbour Board to work their internal railway system. The story often told is that she was sold to work a pump at the Prince's Dock, but this is not true. Lyon had indeed been purchased in May 1859, but the dry dock facility at Prince's Dock did not come into use until the end of January 1875, and it was during ownership by the Mersey Docks and Harbour Board that Lion was reboiled in 1865, and it is probably this boiler which is retained to this day. From 1875 to 1923, Lion was to be found working the pumps at Prince's Dry Dock facility. But we don't know that the old locomotive found in 1923 and restored at Crewe is the same locomotive purchased by the Docks and Harbour Board in 1859. The paper trail simply ends in 1859. There is no paperwork to suggest whether it was Lion, or any of the other locomotives owned by the Harbour Board, or perhaps another old relic acquired second-hand which was used to drive the pumps. Certainly Lion, as she exists today, does not correspond with any of the known dimensions of Lion in service on the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, other than the wheel size and boiler pressure. The present boiler barrel is 8 feet 6 inches long, whilst the known historical dimensions for Lion's boiler is that of 7 feet 4 inches. That's quite a difference in length. There was no nameplate or maker's plate on the engine when it was found in 1923. Those currently on the engine are 20th century mock-ups. Lion was rescued and restored at Crewe between 1929 and 1930, thanks to the efforts of the old locomotive committee. They had persuaded the harbour board to part with the locomotive and to convince Sir Henry Fowler of the LMS to restore the engine almost gratis. A new tender was built at Crewe using parts from at least three furnace railway tenders. The chimney, smoke box doors, boiler cladding, splashers, springs, cab rails, coupling rods and cranks were all new in 1930. The boiler was retubed and a mechanical lubricator also fitted. Also dating from 1930 is the copper firebox casing, designed to make Lion look like she has a haystack firebox. In fact, Lion doesn't have a haystack firebox at all, instead her boiler is of the Leeds type with a high-crowned 
firebox. Most of this work done at Crewe, other than the boiler tubes, is purely cosmetic. The wood and iron sandwich frames, the cylinders, gab valve gear, wheels and axles, and of course the boiler, all date from before 1875. The boiler probably dates from 1865, the frame, wheels, valve gear, cylinders from the 1840s. So whilst very little of line actually dates from 1838, the majority of the locomotive is still a valuable piece of historic machinery dating from the first half of the 19th century. So those are the basics on Lion, a story perhaps not as well known as we think it is. Please like and subscribe and comment below. If you would like to find out more about Lion, check out my forthcoming book, Lion, the story of the real Titfield Thunderbolt by Amberley Publishing, coming in November.